Hello everyone. This video is on practical applications of Six Sigma and Lean methodology. So I had already done a part one session where I had covered about the basic concepts of Six Sigma and Lean. So if you haven't watched that, please do watch that video before watching this. Right? So what is Six Sigma and Lean methodology? The methodology mainly aims quality improvement and quality assurance. So with the help of the tool, it's a very powerful tool which helps to determine the quality of any method, equipment comparison and for QC procedures like frequency of QC to be run for any method and the determine, determination of laboratory performance. So these are the main aims of Six Sigma and Lean. So Six Sigma mainly aims in quality improvement, right? So enhancing quality assurance or quality improvement of any laboratory setup. Whereas Lean methodology mainly aims in removing the waste steps in any process of quality improvement, right? So what is sigma? Sigma is nothing but standard deviation. So a six sigma performance, if you have to uh, define any laboratory or any method to uh, follow a six sigma performance, that indicates there is only 3.4 errors per million tests. So the performance is always indicated with defects per million opportunities, right? So in a laboratory, we can say a, la a method follow Six Sigma performance, give Six Sigma performance in which it has only 3.4 errors per million tests. Now the practical applications of Six Sigma and Lean methodology where all we utilize this to detect laboratory errors and to define the Sigma performance of an assay. So what is detecting laboratory errors? We all know the errors which means pre-analytical error, analytical error or post analytical error and defining the sigma performance of an assay so i have numerous analyzes which i run in my laboratory and those analyzes i can use one or more methods so to perform or to define the sigma performance of all these assays of different analyzes or to compare the sigma performance of two assays of any specific analyte i can utilize this methodology also, in choosing appropriate West Guard rules, right? Choosing appropriate West Guard rules. So, let's see how it does all these. So, detecting errors in a laboratory, the errors can be pre analytical, analytical, and post analytical. So, not only in analytical, pre analytical and the post analytical errors are more, even more than the analytical errors. So, if you consider the estimate laboratory error rate, to be 1 is to 1 point, uh, 1 is to 164, that is 1 error per 164 test, then it means that the errors per million tests will be 6098. Whereas if it is 1 is to 8300, 8, there are only 20 errors per million tests. So, how do you detect this? So, using the Six Sigma is always utilize the DMAIC methodology, right? So define, measure, analyze, improve and control. So using this methodology, we'll be able to detect the errors in any phase, in which phase of the laboratory does the error take place. And then we can define the, first of all, define the uh, error and then measure. So how many errors have been accounted per uh, month or per year? So we can, uh, estimate that and analyze in which phase the problem has occurred and we have to find a solution to remove that yes and improve the improve the efficiency of the method and also to maintain the efficiency that is the control phase so using this we can follow the sigma yes follow the sigma and improve the sigma performance of any analyte so here, we first we have to detect the errors in a laboratory. So for this detecting errors in a laboratory, this method is useful. Next is defining the sigma performance of an assay. So what is the relationship between the sigma metrics and defects per million opportunities? So uh, look at this, the six sigma, if it is six sigma, if an analyte or if a lab method, okay, if any method shows the six sigma performance, what does it mean? There are 3.4 errors per million tests, right? 
so there are only it is the least number of errors right so if you take five sigma performance then there are 233 errors per million tests four sigma performance 6210 errors per million tests so if the sigma of as and when the sigma performance increases the number of errors yes the number of errors decreases yes can you see so as the sigma performance increases the number of errors per million opportunities or per million tests decreases so any laboratory or any healthcare setting always aims at improving the sigma performance and the in a laboratory the acceptable sigma performance can be 3 4 5 right but a six sigma performance is the ultimate best so you have to know few formulas right so what is sigma how do you calculate sigma sigma is nothing but total allowable error minus bias percentage divided by coefficient of variation right total allowable error minus bias percentage by coefficient of variation percentage so what is bias how do you calculate bias it is a lab result minus group mean divided by group mean so how do you get that you get it from the equas yes you get it from the equas and bias determines the inaccuracy bias determines the inaccuracy and also it defines the systematic error yes it defines the systematic error so what is coefficient of variation how do you calculate it it is standard deviation divided by lab mean into 100 so this is from the iqc that you run and then it defines the imprecision of the test also random error defines the random error yes so this is uh, how you calculate bias and coefficient of variation and what is total allowable error total allowable error is given by many regulatory bodies especially clia regulations define total allowable error for different analyzes like it differs for calcium glucose urea creatinine there is a total allowable error which is been given so what is clia it's clinical laboratory improvement amendment that gives the total allowable error now with these three parameters we can calculate the sigma yes so how do you interpret the sigma we have seen already so if it is a six sigma performance we have only 3.4 errors per million test right so there are different charts which with which we can interpret a sigma performance right so with the different so uh, two main charts which we are going to discuss one is the meta decision chart meta decision chart so how do you plot this you have along x axis observed imprecision okay imprecision is nothing is given by our cv percentage and the observed inaccuracy given by the bias percentage so as you can see different areas which cover the sigma performance always uh, we know that the imprecision and inaccuracy should be very minimal for a six sigma performance yes do you agree so imprecision and inaccuracy should be very minimal for a for the quality improvement so six sigma performance defines the least imprecision and the least inaccuracy in any process so after that these areas cover the five sigma four sigma three sigma and two sigma so any analyte which lies beyond the two sig or below the two sigma performance is unacceptable yes unacceptable and which is acceptable good from 4 and 5 it is good yes and if it is 5 to 6 it is world class performance right so this is the meta decision chart which with, with which you can view with which we can interpret the six sigma performance of different analytes so we have seen the potassium so in this chart you can see the potassium lies in the unacceptable performance right so we have to change the methodology or we have to find alternate solutions for this potassium we have to find out using the dm aic method you have to find out where the issue is and correct it accordingly or in any what is the method which is being used and what corrections has to be done for that right so in this uh, in this chart 
alkaline phosphatase lies in the six sig five to six sigma performance. So it is very good, right? So GGT amylase. So these analyzes are showing best performance in this particular laboratory. Now there is one more chart which is operation specific chart, right? So what is this? Uh, what is this chart? It is to choose the QC rules. So the frequency of QC which you have to run for any particular method. So this similarly, uh, this area shows the six sigma performance. Right? So this area shows the two sigma performance. So how do you plot this? You plot the imprecision, allowable imprecision along x-axis and allowable inaccuracy in the y-axis, which is nothing but you are plot, you are taking the value of in precision as a percentage of total allowable error also you are taking the value of inaccuracy or the bias percentage as a percentage of total allowable error so this is how you plot these two along the x axis and y axis and you find out the uh, in which sigma performance your analyze uh, lies right so if it is a six sigma performance then you have only fewer controls so less number of QCs, less frequency of QC run can be uh, can be uh, followed here. Whereas if it is uh, if it is showing if if your analyte or method is showing a, a three sigma or four sigma or five uh, sorry three sigma or two sigma performance or less than two sigma performance, then you have more rules, tighter limits, and more controls. Yes, so you have to follow more rules and more QCs have to be run for that particular process, right? So these are the two main charts. So let's uh, understand, let's try to understand with the help of an example. So what example? In this laboratory, yes, in this particular laboratory, we have taken uh, around 10 analytes, right? So I have taken the total allowable error, the total allowable error for these 10 analytes from Clier, regula Clier regulation. Right. Also, I have uh, also uh, it has the bias percentage. So these are the bias percentage values and CB percentage values. So with these three parameters, uh, the lab has calculated the sigma score. So now look at this: uh, the creatinine value, glucose value, potassium value, total protein. All these have shown. 2 and less than 2 sigma performance, right? 2 and less than 2 sigma performance, which is very poor. Yes, which is very poor. And you have to definitely follow some uh, regulations for this. You have to uh, run more QCs or what precautions you have to take or you have to change the method or what whatever you have to do, you have to uh, take any, take strict action for this 2 sigma performance and uh, 2 sigma performance analyze, right? So choosing, how do you choose? How do you do this? So if in a lab you have any analyte that gives you only a 3 sigma or 2 sigma or below 2 sigma uh, performance, then what should you do? Yes, what should you do? So what should you do? If it gives a 2 sigma or below 2 sigma performance, the number of controls which has to be run is should be 6. Normally what do we do? That There can be 2 controls run or 4 controls run or 6 controls run. Yes. So if your method is if it's very is showing very poor performance, then what should you do? You have to run six controls, six controls, and in what frequency? In one QC per ten patient samples, you have to run. Yes. So look at how frequent you have to run QC in this case. Whenever your test or whenever your method has shown poor performance, you have to run six controls. That to in what frequency you have to run one per 10 patient samples you have to run yes it is very uh, too much of like it is the frequency is really very more right yes now uh, see the three sigma performance for all so whichever best card rule all of the whichever violation of any violation of any rule you have to run six controls for one uh, one qc per one run per 10 patient samples that's what you have to do for a Analyte which shows or a method which shows two sigma performance. Now take a three sigma performance method. So if any method has given you a three sigma performance, so all of the West Guard rules, if violation of any of the West Guard rules, you have to run 
six controls and in what frequency one QC run per 45 patient samples and in one run you have to run six controls yes do you understand so four sigma performance violation of any of these rules yes violation of any of these rules this is one three yes what is one three yes it is one uh, one particular QC So it is one value which has uh, which has gone beyond three standard deviation. Two two s is nothing but two values which has gone beyond plus a two s standard devi two standard deviation or minus two standard deviation. And r four s is nothing but a value has gone one value has gone beyond one two s and plus two s and one value has gone beyond minus two s. And what is 4, 1, yes, which is 4 values which has gone, 4 consecutive values which are, uh, which has gone beyond 1 in S, which is on the same side, right. So, in this case, what you should, what should you do? So, violation of, in any, violation of these 4 rules, uh, West Guard rules, you have to run 4 controls and in what frequency? Per 100 samples, yes, per 100 samples you have to run four controls per hundred samples in violation of any of these four rules when in a method which has shown four sigma performance now c5 sigma performance it is violation of 1 3s 2 2s r 4s you can run two control levels so two controls is uh, enough for per 450 patient samples so per 450 patient samples two controls in violation of any of these three best guard rule whenever the method in for, for a method which has given you five sigma performance it is acceptable right it is for four five is all acceptable sigma performances so number of qc runs will be less in these and six sigma if you see it is only violation of one three years you can run two controls per thousand patient samples yes so the frequency has decreased so, when the sigma performance is increased, the frequency of QC run decreases, right? Frequency of QC run decreases. So, this is the, uh, so you, we use, uh, we utilize the six sigma methodology to choose the best card rules and the frequency of QC run for any analyte. So, what all we've seen, we've seen about the uh, practical applications of six sigma that detecting laboratory errors in, in what error your lab has it is pre-analytical analytical or post-analytical so first locate it and then uh, take measures yes and defining sigma performance of an assay as your sigma performance increases the number of errors decreases yes so a uh, few formulas which you have to know to calculate sigma so sigma is nothing but total allowable error minus bias by coefficient of variation so method you have to chart main charts uh, know about method decision chart and operation specific chart and then an example on how we have to calculate the sigma score and with the help of sigma score how we can choose the best card rules so these uh, in violation of any of the best card rules in what frequency should you run the controls and how many controls should you use Yes, so this is nothing but choosing the best card rule. So these are the practical applications of Six Sigma in a laboratory, in a biochemistry laboratory. Thank you all.